Hello, I'm, um, I'm Yuri. I'm the lead developer of the Embark framework by, by Status. Uh, we're trying to do a framework that makes it as easy as possible to develop decentralized applications. And, and I do mean decentralized applications in, in the true sense of the word. So dApps that really use the entire uh, decentralized stack that is currently uh, available. And I'm, we're really excited to, to talk today about Embark 4. And we also have a few other surprises. Uh, first, uh, though, we'll, we'll just do a quick detour for Embark 3 and what happened uh, this year. Uh, for those of you that uh, might not be familiar yet with, uh, with Embark. So this year, back in May, uh, Status announced that it was supporting Embark. Uh, and the team has, has grown a lot. We're now like seven, seven members full-time working on this. And so first of all, Embark goes far beyond just the smart contracts. Uh, it does support Solidity and other languages like Viper and Bamboo out of the box, and you can even use them together if, if, uh, if, if you want to. Uh, but it, it also supports Swarm, IPFS, Whisper, and, and recently ENS as more components in, in, in the stack. Uh, and we can also add other technologies, technologies through the plugin API, uh, and we're working with some uh, other projects to, include, to add their projects uh, to Embark. So the, the first big difference in Embark with, uh, with, with uh, other tools is that the contracts, you describe the relationship between the contracts. So instead of very complex uh, and often, often spaghetti-like uh, migrations, all you have to do is really describe how contracts are uh, related to each other and what actions you might want to do once a contract is deployed and, and other uh, events. And Embark will automatically figure out what is the best way to deploy those contracts to reflect the state that you just described. And this also affects if you change a particular contract, it will not deploy everything, it will de deploy only what's actually needed to again ref reflect that uh, particular configuration. So uh, Status uses uh, Embark extensively internally for, the, for dApps and, uh, and uh, smart contracts. This is a more or less real example. I, I modified, modified a lot uh, for the purposes of, of this uh, presentation. Uh, but the, the first thing is that there are environments. So you, there's the, the special default environment, which is a, a, a sort of environment that applies to every other environment. And then you can override in a specific environment any particular uh, configurations that you might need. So in this case, there is this mini-me token factory, which uh, it's already deployed on Robson. So we, we define it there. So when we, def when we deploy to Robson, it will take the configuration of, uh, of default, merge it with Robson. And in that case, it will not try to redeploy uh, mini token factory will just reuse uh, that, that address. Then uh, here you can see there's a mini me token factory is, is being passed as a, as a string with a, a dollar sign, and that's a special uh, that's a special directive that it tells Embark that uh, this contract for this argument it needs the address of this uh, of this contract. So Embark with this knows that it first needs to deploy mini mini uh, mini me token factory or get the address, and only then it, it should deploy this STT uh, token. Well, there's also other directives like deploy if, which will only deploy if a particular condition is true. That can be something in JavaScript code or can be even something in, in a contract. Uh, and you can also do multiple actions uh, when a contract deploys. And there's other directives here, which I'll not really go into, because there's a lot of them. There's things like after deploy and other directives. Uh, so you, you can do a lot of different uh, configurations with, with this type of thing. And here's another example that uh, you can also specify a URI for a particular contract. And uh, this is very useful if you want to quickly prototype something that and use a contract form, open Zeppelin, or in this case, uh, give it. You can specify a URL or even, even a swarm uh, URL or IPFS. The account configuration by the issue? Yeah, you have Okay, questions we ask now. Is that okay? All right. So uh, the, uh, the accounts by default, we will take the accounts. Uh, on a, of a connected node. 
Uh, however, you can specify, yeah, there's a light wallet functionality which you can use to specify accounts and even set their balance. So in this case, uh, we define here two accounts. We use a private key, not one to use a mnemonic. And we, we, there's two examples uh, that are possible. It, preferably don't put your private key in source control. It's a good idea. And uh, you can see there's a balance five eater, which so if you're in a development chain or a, te or a, or a test environment, we'll set that to, to five eater. Of course, this won't work on mainnet, but it's just for development. <laughs> And ENS is, is uh, so ENS in Embark is considered uh, one, another layer in the, in the stack, so which is the naming layer. Uh, and ENS right now seems to be the only uh, working decentralized uh, naming uh, system. So it's the only one that's actually uh, supported. Uh, Embark will, uh, when you are in the development chain or in a private chain, Embark will automatically deploy and set up the ENS contracts so you can use, the, use them in your application. And this is how configuration might look like. So in, in this case, when this is enabled and we are in the in my, in development chain, uh, if I go to my DAP and resolve status.add, that will uh, automatically, that will d resolve to, the, to that address that is defined. And you can put the contract, a contract that you, do, you just deployed uh, as one of those addresses. If your DAP, then it's, if you are having bar connected to a known chain like Robston or Mainnet, then it will just use the ENS contracts that are already there. It will not, not try to, uh, to redeploy them. All right, it, the tests, uh, so, so there's a lot of functionality in, in, in the tests. They are, they are quite flexible in the sense that you can use the same contract configuration that we've seen, we seen before. Uh, if, if you don't want that, you want to do very, very pure unit tests, you can also do that, just import the contract objects and, and deploy, deploy them in a before each or before all. Uh, they're quite fast, they, they try, uh, there's like little tricks that the framework tries to do. Like if you have any Embark instance, it will actually connect to that instance and reuse a lot of the the code that's already running. Like the might reuse the compiler or might even reuse the node that you already have, which is much faster than uh, booting a, a, a VM uh, on the spot. Uh, it will display gas costs and it also supports code coverage uh, out of the box. And there's a lot of functionality in the previous Embark, which we'll, we'll, we cannot really cover it here, but for instance, there's full support for, for Webpack, so it makes it very easy to, uh, to do production builds uh, of your DAP, or, or so you can have very small file sizes, which is uh, really handy when uploading to, to, so to Swarm, for instance. It supports already uh, IP1102. Uh, there's many templates ready to use, such as if you want to use like a React Templar or, you, or when you want to do like a status DAP, there's also a plugin for that. Um, and you can very easily so create private chains. Uh, so if, if you're with other developers, you want to develop on the same chain, that's also pretty simple to do. And there's, there's a, a plugin uh, API that allows you also to extend and completely change the functionality if you want to. Uh, in fact, Embark itself is, is entirely a uh, plugin uh, based, so everything in, in it is, is implemented as a, as a plugin. So if you want to add some other technology or completely change, you, you, you can actually uh, quite easily. So now Embark 4. So the team has been working hard in, in this the last, uh, last uh, few months. And uh, there's this, there's this uh, feature in, in Embark 3, which is the transaction logger. And what, what this, what this uh, did and still does is when you do a transaction in your DAP, say you're developing, it will show in the logs what contract you're calling, uh, what method, what parameters, and, and all, the, all, that, all that information. Uh, in Embark 4 now, it will also show why, if a transaction failed, it will show you why and exactly what line caused that to, uh, to fail. It will also show you the, the, the variables, values, and so you can easily see uh, why. Yeah. Uh, we we also including in Mark for a, a, a debugger. Uh, so if you type, you can either type debug in the transaction, or you can, or if you just type debug, then it will debug the last filling transaction. So you can easily. 
uh, you can quickly see, okay, what are the, the, the values of the variables? You can do next, previous, and other, other commands. <laughs> We also including uh, experimental uh, DAP generator, uh, and the idea of this is that you can you can give Embark a contract, and it will attempt to generate a React app uh, that works for that uh, for that contract, which is, can be quite handy for uh, for prototyping. And we we went um, a level deeper and. It, for certain, for particular cases, it, you can also just uh, specify like a model, and it will create the, it will create the entire the contract and the DAP based on the on the configuration that you did. So in, in the case of this of this command, uh, for instance, because it has picture IPFS, it knows that it has to put the functionality to upload and display uh, pictures. They should go to IPFS, and the hash that gets returned needs to be uh, in the in the smart uh, contract. Now, Embark uh, has since version two, I believe, uh, this dashboard, and uh, just be very clear, this is not going away, because um, uh, we got very, typically very good f uh, feedback uh, on this. Uh, however, we're introducing now uh, Cockpit, and this is, uh, this is essentially a, a complementary, but it launches, uh, it launches a UI that you can you can you can access to interact with with Embark, so it kind of takes that that dashboard and puts it as a, as a web UI. So you have the same things that that you had in the console from the services. You can see the deployed contract, but it's obviously much more interactive. So for example, the in the console, oh yeah, we also have like light team, dark team, depending on your preference. Uh, I prefer the dark. <laughs> uh, so the console, for instance, you have auto suggest, and it it tries to recognize what you're doing and and give the appropriate suggestions. So if you're using Web3, it kind of gives you a documentation on the spot of, of what uh, each of the suggestions are. Uh, if you're typing a contract address, it will give information like uh, where that contract is deployed, what is the type of uh, the object. It also has a blockchain explorer, uh, so you, and it has pretty much typically everything you would expect. Uh, to have uh, from accounts, block transactions, and the contracts as well, the contracts that you have uh, just deployed. It has an editor, um, and again, this is complementary. You, don't, you can still use Veeam or VS Code or, or for, God forbid, Emacs. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, and when you when you open a contract file, you can immediately you can interact with it in in, in the in the in the IDE. You can see that you're in the sidebar. Uh, there's also I thought the screenshot might be missing. There's also a gas a gas price estimator, uh, which is useful for connecting to a, a more public network, so you can see how fast the transactions can can actually go and for what price. Uh, we also have the details in case you need the ABI or, or the bytecode to copy paste that. Uh, we also have the same transaction logger that I showed in the console, but in here, here you can actually see what were the transactions done to that contract, and you can actually uh, filter them if you want to. You can filter by events, and you can also debug them. And in the case of debugger, so it will show you the contract. It will show the contract global variables. It will show you the solidity variables as well as the, the local variables to that function. And you can step through it, step in, uh, breakpoints, uh, the whole thing. <laughs> and there's also a, a browser preview uh, that that you can use for more quick uh, uh, prototyping. So a, uh, a good of, over, a good workflow in this would be, for example, that that I press the set value. I see in a transaction the set went in, maybe it broke. I press debug, go to debug, and I, I can then uh, debug the contract and see and see what went wrong. And we also introducing this uh, a deployment tool. So the idea here is that we, we, from speaking to many of our users, we realize that um, a lot of people actually prefer to deploy directly with uh, with with MetaMask, uh, typically with the browser ID, with the browser ID, and then deploy to MetaMask uh, because it, sometimes they don't feel very comfortable deploying from the command line, and because in the case of uh, more adv advanced tools like Embark, it does a, it can do a lot of deployments, 
uh, and and it, when deploying the mainnet, people have, need to have the confidence of what's actually happening. So he, here instead, in, in this with this option, Embark will tell you what is the intended deploy order, and then you can actually deploy uh, semi manually one by one. And each time you deploy a contract manually, you can interact with it, see if everything is okay, and then you can move to the to, to the next contract. So you can get more info in the in the Bark in the Bark website at status.im. Uh, it will it's now available as an alpha. It's still on an alpha stage, so be careful. Uh, and uh, we all, we also intended to make it available as a as a pure web application. Uh, if you are interested in that, you can go to the Embark website and sign up in the mailing list, and you will get uh, an invite. And I just want to thank the Embark team and all our contributors that made all of this uh, all of this possible. And thank you. <laughs> the debugger, like the visual debugger, are you using? Are you leveraging Remix for that? Yep, we're using so, Remix. So, so you're so just re reusing most of that uh, library from Remix. Yes. So Remix, uh, it, it's being basically. Uh, uh, refactoring into uh, an API that you can use, uh, and Embark is leveraging, leveraging that. So it has a, a pretty much the same functionality as a, as a Remix. All right, thanks. Hi. Um, so I understood that you provide um, like a testing framework for off-chain um, code. Does it work for uh, Solidity contracts too? And as an alternative, do you integrate Truffle or, I mean, the whole suite, you know, Truffle, Drizzle, and, and um, uh, what's it called? Uh, Ganache. Thank you. Uh, I, I, can you repeat the first question? I'll... Yeah, you, you, in, the, in your presentation, you, show, uh, you showed, um, you, um, I mean, apparently you can write tests with Embark. Right. Uh, what do you test exactly? Do you test the, the smart contract code or you test the, the off-chain code? So that's my first question. And if it works for both, and if not, do you, for, for testing smart contract code, do you integrate Truffle? Right. Um, so it tests the smart contracts, that's, that's the main focus. Uh, it actually supports Solidity uh, tests. Uh, a Truffle is like a different framework, and it does a, a more, a sub, uh, it does like a specifically just for the smart contracts. Well, this does the smart contract, so it does what you you were describing, like Truffle does, but it also focuses on, on the other other components. And Drizzle, I assume that's independent of Truffle, so in that case, it sh it should it should work. We got one right here. Uh, hey, so uh, when you are showing the configuration, you are showing some kind of hooks in this uh, JavaScript object like on deploy and the string representing the code that it's gonna be evaluated. My question is why don't you just use anonymous function with you know some arguments and like you're, you're doing it like <laughs> Angular 1 style like with this funny syntax. Uh, uh, well, look, uh, what, what, <laughs> so I took, I took like a, a real configuration and then I thought, okay, what's missing here that could be educational and I added. I, I didn't really talk, I didn't really think about, you know, that type of stuff. The goal, would, if anything, it would probably confuse people more. Uh, and it was already a big config file. Uh, so uh, for, to answer your question for educational purposes, that, that's, the, that's the answer. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, as a long time Truffle and Embark user, I've been waiting anxiously to see which framework, actually which JavaScript kind of version of the blockchain, so Ganache or uh, whatever Embark powers up is going to support default event reading, um, like when they happen in contracts without having to subscribe to them. So, are there any plans to have con uh, to have events tracked by default from your smart contracts and shown in oh. the block explorer? So you, you mean actual inf solidity events? You don't mean yeah. like just the transactions? No, no, just actual events from the code without having to subscribe individually. Uh. I'll, I'll think about it because I, I feel there's some I, know, I feel there's I know, some downsides to it. But I know there, this is coming in the next version of Ganache, right? And I really hope you guys beat them to it. 
Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, because we, we do have the logger that you can see the states. So doing that, it looks fairly trivial, unless I'm misunderstanding some. But yeah, we, we, we so I, I didn't show really the, the the explorer for the the contracts, and you can you can choose your contract and you can, and yeah, you can interact with it. But I think this we could also add the state to it. So I, th right. I think it's a good a good suggestion. So you support uh, ENS, you support IPFS, are you going to support IPNS? Uh, we actually do support IPNS, although I didn't mention it, but we, we do support it too.